What's up guys, RGT85 here, and this isn't a normal video that I'll do on this channel, but it's a story that needs to be told. And it's unfortunate that this situation happened because you know, I really don't want to do something like this, but I have to. I have to speak out about this because it's a problem and it's a really major issue that's gonna go pretty much unnoticed unless I say something about it. So I've been working with Nintendo indie developers and indie developers in general for a long time, you know, working with uh, my first website, GamingTruth.com, working with Nintendo enthusiasts and PlayStation enthusiasts, all the enthusiast brands. You work with a lot of indie developers, especially on the Nintendo side. And one of the goals of Nintendo enthusiasts when the Wii U was, you know, basically struggling was we wanted to spotlight indie developers and their games because, you know, the big websites weren't doing that. They didn't care about that. You know, a lot of people only care about AAA games. We wanted to give the little guys a moment to shine. We did a huge written article about the 120 upcoming Wii U indie games. Uh, we did, uh, Jason did videos on them. We used to do indie summits on Nintendo Enthusiast channel where we have a bunch of indie developers just come on, plug their stuff, talk about the industry, talk about the systems and stuff like that. It was a really positive experience and it was really fun. You know, I developed a lot of uh, relationships with developers from doing things like that. And it was a really good scene, you know, it was a really good positive scene. And one of the games that was featured in the 120 upcoming Wii U indie games was a game called Koki the Game. I believe I'm saying that right. I could be saying it wrong, but I think that's how you pronounce it. And this developer recently within the past few weeks was uh, DMing the Nintendo Enthusiast Twitter page and basically asking if Jason would make a trailer for his game. Uh, Jason does freelance video work on the side. He has a studio and Jason spoke with him. I was able to see the whole conversation. They were never able to reach an agreement on a dollar amount. He didn't want to pay that much. And so Jason just bowed out of it. And I thought to myself, you know, we have another guy that works on uh, the Enthusiast sites. His name is Brett. Brett is, you know, up and coming sort of in the world of video. He's doing all of the video reviews on Nintendo enthusiasts, PlayStation enthusiasts. He puts them all together and he does good work. So I said, you know, Brett might be looking for some extra money. Let's see if they can reach an agreement. So Jason had him contact Brett and they reached an agreement to pay X amount of dollars for a trailer of the game. And so I talked to Brett because I kind of, I kind of like to keep Brett under my wing, um, sort of like a little brother thing. And I said to him, I said, what does he want from the trailer? And he said, he didn't really give me anything. He gave me footage of the game and a song to use. What should I do? I said, well, you know, honestly, whatever you do initially, he's not gonna be happy with it. He's gonna tell you something specifically, but you know, if you want to try to wow him, you know, go ahead. And so he sent me the first trailer that he did. And I said, you know, this is a good trailer. Send it to him, see if he likes it. He sent it to him and of course, the developer did not like it because they wanted text in certain spots and they wanted it to say weird English things because I don't think English is his first um, language or whatever. And um, I just told Brett, I said, just work with him, do what he wants to do. He is the client. You are the person creating the, the, you know, the art for the client. Just make him happy. You know, that's all that matters at the end of the day. You make him happy, you get your money, everyone wins. So Brett went back and redid the whole trailer to the way this guy wanted to do it. So now we're talking to you know, hours and hours of time that he put into this trailer, almost to the point of where for the monetary value, it probably wasn't worth it, but you know, it was a good experience for Brett. Like how many people can say they made a video game trailer for a game that's featured on the Nintendo Wii U eShop? Like that's a pretty cool thing. So Brett wanted to do it more so just for the exposure and the experience than the monetary value, but of course monetary value helps. And so Brett finished up the trailer which was watermarked and he sent it to the gentleman and the gentleman said, okay, I like it, it's perfect. Um, send me the unwatermarked trailer and I will send you the money. And I said, no, 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 no. You don't send him anything. You sent him the watermark trailer. If he's happy with it, he will pay you and then you go about your life and you send him the trailer. So Jason jumped into the conversation and wasn't really able to get any headway. And I told Brett, I said, you know, Brett, add me to the conversation. Let me just, you know, chime in, give my two cents. And, you know, we'll come to a resolution one way or another. So Brett added me to the conversation and I basically said, you know, no disrespect to anyone in here, but this is the way this is going to work. I, you know, I've done a lot of business. I do a lot of stuff with YouTube. I understand, you know, the world of business. Um, and you're not going to get an unwatermarked trailer without the payment. It's as simple as that. You're happy with the product. You, if you want this product, you will give him the money that was agreed upon and then he will send you the unwatermarked trailer. You know, no big deal. This is how it works. If you're happy, then just give him the money and then you get the trailer. And he retorted with some 
long-winded explanation that I don't know anything about business. He's the one who works with Nintendo, et cetera, et cetera. So I was just like, whatever. He, he said, you know, if you don't trust me, then I don't know if I want to do business with you. And meanwhile, I'm thinking, you know, trust isn't given, trust is earned in the world of business. I'm not going to trust you because if I, I don't even know you. So either you give the money for the trailer or you don't get the trailer. So he basically said he wasn't going to pay. And I said, okay, then you don't get a trailer. Good luck with your game. I wish you all the best. Have a good one. Left the conversation, told Brett and Jason to do the same. And then he private messaged Jason and um, had the following to say, um, which really caught me off guard, honestly, because, you know, it just, you'll find out. Send this to RGT85. You know what? I think you did a big favor for the promotion of my game by being racist to me because now I can post this on my YouTube page and tell the whole truth about racist with my humble no budget game. RGT85, I need you on this. Come on my fella and keep throwing dirt to my humble game because you want to be trusted, but you don't want to trust those who are putting food on your table. How's that? Tomorrow, I spelled it wrong, at night, everyone will see your racism with me and my game. Shame on you because you don't want to give a hand to those who are putting food on your table. God bless you, my friends. But I do believe in God. Amen. First and foremost, this gentleman was not putting any food on my table. This gentleman was not putting any money into my pocket. It was all with Brett. I was just an intermediate because I'm more experienced in the world of video stuff than Brett is. Secondly, the racist thing caught me completely off guard because I did not know if I was talking to a man, a woman. I did not know if I was talking to an animal. I didn't know who I was talking to. Koki, to me, sounded like a French thing. I came to find out that it was actually a Puerto Rican thing because I posted something about it on my Facebook and a lot of my Puerto Rican friends said that Koki, the, the image of the character, is, a, is like the symbol of Puerto Rico. So I was racist towards Puerto Ricans, but meanwhile, I grew up in Connecticut, which has a very high Puerto Rican uh, population. Some of my best friends in Connecticut were Puerto Ricans. And if you really want to get into my personal life, my first cousin is half Puerto Rican. Yes, there are Puerto Ricans in my family. Am I racist towards my family? No. So that really miffed me because anyone who knows me knows that I'm not racist. Um, so that really bothered me. But I thought either he's going to bluff and not make a video or he's going to make a video and no one's going to care and then if i have to you know come out with a statement after the fact whatever i can do that um but i wasn't too worried about it and that's really where the story should have ended you know no trailer crazy accusations the end but unfortunately that's not where it ended because last night um at about 12 31 in the morning um jason messaged me and he messaged me a trailer and it was a trailer for Koki the game. I said, well, what the hell is this? And he said, watch it. And so I watched it. And in the bottom corner of the trailer, you could clearly see the watermark where Brett had put Jason's company logo on there. And it was covered up by Koki the frog. And it was the exact trailer. So he stole the watermark trailer that he refused to pay for, the unwatermarked version, and uploaded it and tried to hide the fact of it. So I said, you know, I, I don't think I'm gonna let this fly. So I proceeded to make a Facebook post about it. And I said, hey, this piece of crap stole a trailer that my buddy made for him, refused to pay him for it, and then uploaded the unwatermarked version. If you wanna give him a piece of your mind, go right ahead. And so quickly, a lot of people watch the game because the game is absolutely atrocious. I'll, Put up a screenshot or two of the game like it looks like a high schooler made it sort of you know in like five minutes as their first you know game project it looks absolutely horrible but it's not about the quality of the game i don't care about the quality of the game what i care about is this guy proceeded to upload a trailer that he did not own that was watermarked and refused to pay for this trailer and then anyone who said anything on the facebook page in the comment section he deleted all the comments and you know i saw some facebook stuff where he's laughing about it he's he's joking about it so um no unfortunately in my world that's that's not how things operate so uh i have your name sir uh alberto roman 
Um, Mr. Roman, you are a scumbag. You are one of the sleaziest people in the video game industry. And it's unfortunate that Nintendo will not be able to do anything because, you know, the Wii U's on its way out. They probably don't care. But I do actually know people at Nintendo, such as Damon Baker. So I'm going to let Damon Baker, who pretty much oversees all third-party developments, including indie developments, know personally, as I email him on his personal email address, about what your little situation was. Maybe I'll link him this video. Furthermore, I'm going to share this video on my social media. Furthermore, I'm going to send this video to YouTubers who cover stuff like this, the Jimquisition, Review Tech USA, and you know, maybe something will come of it, maybe some video game websites will pick it up, maybe they won't. I don't really care because at the end of the day, if I'm able to inform my viewers about your sleazy, disgusting tactics of stealing a trailer that somebody made specifically for you, refusing to pay for it, and then uploading the watermarked version on your channel and then having a laugh about it, if I can at least inform my viewers of that at the very least, then I'm happy because at least I know that I got the word out there. And it, this definitely is not a reflection on all indie developers. I know a ton of great indie developers. This is unfortunately a guy who created a piece of shit game but is a piece of shit person, more importantly. And it's a shame. So that's the story of Koki the game. It's $6 on the Wii U eShop. You're better off of buying you know, a $6 knife and just stabbing it into your leg. Um, you'll probably get more enjoyment of from that than actually playing his game. I highly suggest you don't watch it or check it out. If you wanna watch the disgusting trailer that he uploaded with broken English that he requested, feel free to look at it. I will link it in the comments section down below. He probably won't get any ad revenue from it, so it's no big deal. But yeah, that's the story of Koki the game and the developer who is an absolute scumbag and probably one of the worst indie developers that unfortunately I've ever came across or ever heard about. So let me know what you think about this situation in the comments section down below. Um, hopefully you guys, you know, see the big picture about how this is a terrible thing. And, you know, feel free to share this video around. If you're on Nintendo Facebook groups, indie developers, if you're an indie developer yourself, share this with your colleagues, share this with other YouTubers. I don't care. I want to get the word out there that nobody should support Koki the game since this gentleman felt it was okay to steal work that you agreed to pay for, did not pay for, and then had a laugh about it. Because in my world, that's a bitch move. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you hit that like button, and I'll catch you guys next time. Later. RGT, it ain't fine. RGT, it ain't fine. RGT.